Hey everybody. So a subscriber wanted me to tell my story about being raised a Jehovah's Witness. And I thought I'd play some music, but it's kind of distracting. Let me turn it down a little bit. <clears throat> um, so my story, I've talked about it, but I haven't really told you my whole story. Okay, so I am four generations, or well, I'm the third generations of my family being Jehovah's Witnesses. So both my grand, I'm going to turn this off. It's too distracting. <laughs> both my grandmothers became Jehovah's Witnesses like in the, I would say, 40s or something like that. And both my grandfathers were not Jehovah's Witnesses. <clears throat> um, one of my grandfather became a Jehovah's Witness when he was old. <clears throat> which was kind of weird, but he did. So, baby boomer generation. So, I don't know what religion my grandmother was before. I think she might have been like Baptist. I don't know what she was. But it was during the Great Depression, that time period, and she had a bunch of children. And so, my mom was like four around that age when uh, my grandmother became a Jehovah's Witness. So she had celebrated a few birthdays and some Christmases and stuff like that. <clears throat> Jehovah's Witnesses do not celebrate any holiday, except for your wedding anniversary, the death of Jesus, which is weird, the death of Jesus, and um, uh, is that it? Wedding anniversaries, the death of Jesus. Yeah, they don't even celebrate Mother's Day or Father's Day. Um, they don't vote. But you know what? When you wake up, you know why. Um, and they're not awake, which is funny. So <clears throat> the Jehovah's Witnesses are connected to the Freemasons. And I only discovered that back in like 2016 when I was dating the sociopath, which I've talked about. So he told me I was crazy, um, which was gaslighting, which is what inspired my channel. Uh, <clears throat> not just that, but it was just all the gaslighting. Um, and I, so he told me I was crazy. So I started, like, I, I he, he says, well, you're mentally ill because you were raised in a cult. And I'm like, huh, well, that, that might, he might have a point there. So... I went online and I started researching Jehovah's Witnesses and then I found out the Freemason stuff. <clears throat> and I, you know, I knew, I heard of Freemasons. I never even thought about Freemasons before. I never even, you know, I, you see those buildings on the corner. I knew about the Shriners, you know, but I just never thought about any, I never even thought about Freemasonry like George Washington being Freemason. I just never thought about anything relating to Freemasons. And um, <clears throat> so then I started learning about all that stuff. I went through like a serious uh, paranoia and I'm still struggling with it because I'm awake, but it's it just changes the levels and degrees of everything. Um, I'm not in a fear, in fear like really, but like I just, You know what I mean. Okay. Anyway, um, so I found out all this stuff about Charles Taze Russell um, being a Freemason. <clears throat> and then uh, there's a, tons of scandals um, about, so I, I, I started watching YouTube videos of ex-Jehovah's Witnesses who are the apostates, which is what Jehovah's Witnesses, when you do not, no longer believe what they believe, you're an apostate. Well, yeah, okay. You're an apostate if you speak against it. So you can no longer be a Jehovah's Witness, but you still believe it, but you're just not practicing. They won't consider you an apostate. They just think you're just like weak spiritually. Uh, you're not strong. You need to pray more, you know, your <clears throat> depression, whatever it is. Um, so... <clears throat> So, um, I have so much brain frog, I, frog, <laughs> fog, 
<laughs> it's my th I know it's my thyroid. I'm working on all my health stuff, but um <clears throat> It could be 5G too. Actually, oh, whatever. Anyway, so uh, uh, I don't like being on camera. I really don't. I I don't like looking at myself. I just like to like it's distracting me, um, which is why I do a lot of my vi videos not on camera. So. Uh, found out all the stuff about the Freemason stuff. I watched a bunch of ex Jehovah's Witness YouTube videos. Really woke up <clears throat> to all of the deception behind that. And even the twisting of the scriptures and um, all the mind control, how they put subliminal m m imagery in their uh, literature, how it's a property flipping um organization disguised as a religion which you know a cult um they claim that they have the truth that's what they call it is the truth and all it is is a lie so <clears throat> there's so much truth in it though which is crazy because you know they say you shouldn't have blood transfusions i honestly think that we probably shouldn't because one thing you don't you know what they're doing in the blood um people probably get pledge transfusions thinking they're getting a good one and it could have HIV, hepatitis. I mean, I, I, there are people who get them and they survive. And I mean, I don't know. There's just tons of stuff about it. But um, I've gone back and forth with the thought about, you know, is blood transfusion okay? But I'm starting to think it's not really. <clears throat> not. I don't know. I mean, spiritually, the life is in the blood. But this is a Jehovah's Witness teaching. I'm not really going to try to get into that stuff but when we understand that the people who run the world are so evil and the companies who have like i think you should stay away from hospitals at this point honestly i was talking to my friend i'm going to get back on the job as witness topic but i was talking to my friend and i was like talking about that um religion um is it science christian scientist i think that's the name of their religion or but they they don't go to doctors i don't believe i think they only do their own health health stuff um <clears throat> so back to the chobas one stuff um uh the freemason stuff okay so learning all of that and then learning all of the the prop they that they are also property flipping there they've invested in war bonds um they've d donated money to hitler and yet they had um a bunch of jehovah's witnesses d during um world war ii jehovah's witnesses were in the concentration camps too so the heads of that religion have these minions these rank and file people that are donating their money believing in this cult dying for it because people commit suicide people lose their family people you know i people do die from blood transfusion or not having a blood transfusion <clears throat> but that's not all of it um <clears throat> but they're just deceiving these people and, and people will donate their money people when they uh will um so if a family member dies and they don't have any relatives they might or if even if they do but they'll donate all of their money to that organization and everything is a tax write-off for these people i mean they're all religions i think all of them all religions i i heard that the satanic church or whatever wants to be tax free or something the church of satan <laughs> um <clears throat> So, anyway, so all of the, uh, you know, all of the, uh, the alcohol companies, cigarette companies, um, they invest in them. Um, so they basically take my parents' money, my family, friends' money, and they invest it in there. And they're not allowed to smoke. They're not allowed to get intoxicated well you shouldn't but anyway they're not supposed to they can drink but they don't get wasted it's, they're not supposed to but they do have alcohol problems in that religion um 
It's a publishing company disguised as a religion also. It's just to make money for the literature. So it used to be people would, you know, when you go to knock on someone's door, you would ask for, you know, 25 cents for a watchtower or an awake when I was a kid. (laughs) And then eventually it became donations. You know, if you feel like donating toward the cause or whatever to the literature, the, the cost of printing it, um, you can. But my parents would pay out of their own pocket a monthly stipend of whatever they felt was necessary. And the congregations were always um, <clears throat> in debt, kind of. like So basically, my parents, you know, all of the minion, the, the rank and file, are giving their money. They're the ones who are paying for all of this, these buildings and the literature and all this stuff, and they don't actually have a right to own it. So what they end up doing is they take and they they sell that property and they turn it into a bank or something, and then those people end up getting stacked on top of each other where they have combined congregations. So, for instance, they meet like <clears throat> three times a week. Well, it was three times a week, but it I think it became two. They Because of the, the way times are, both parents have to work – Um, they cut their meeting times down and they don't call it church. They call it meetings. That's their term because they want to be no part of the world. And yet they're every part of the world. I talked about in a video that they're actually the front people for the Illuminati. Jehovah's Witnesses are, and I'll talk about that too. And I'm a little shaky, so my phone might be shaking. And you know what? No, 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 no. Get my stand. (laughs) Um... So, okay, property flipping. What else? Oh, and in their literature, <clears throat> if you take a mirror and you take a picture and you split it in half, you will see like demonic looking imagery. They've designed it to look like that. Sometimes even their artwork will look like uh, a child is giving oral to a person and it just the way that they just like how disney does his subliminal sexual picture imagery it'll be there um some of them will have like erection looking type of picture you don't see it but it's subliminal um and so jehovah's witnesses have said they know about this is happening but they got rid of the people who were putting this stuff in there they're always blaming the the jehovah's witnesses for the problem and it's not the Jehovah's Witness, it's the, the heads of the organization. So, um, <clears throat> let's see what else. So, I was born in the 70s, or 71, and um, we had to do the preaching work. I My mother was a regular pioneer on and off. My father did it on and off, which is full-time ministry. Um, it's not like the Mormons where it's just the guys, the girls can do it too. And, um, I was a full-time minister my senior year in high school. And then you go to the kingdom ministry school and you, you take a class for a week and then you earn a, like a certificate saying you went through the class and you learn all there, but it's just like regurgitating the same crap over and over again. So, <clears throat> They don't, another, okay, so I'm going to tell you about their um, their belief system. And I'm going to also tell you about the preaching work and, and stories of my travels and, <clears throat> and stuff. Um, well, I honestly, I hated being a Jehovah's Witness. I really hated it. Um, I didn't like being around the people. It, it felt so fake and shallow. And um, <clears throat> they have conventions. They get together, like, big stadiums and stuff they do that every summer they would have them a few times a year and they just felt within that religion there's just so many cliques there was like the poor people they're just cliques like in school type of it's just they i never felt that they were like truly spiritual people because there wasn't the love that you should feel in a in a in a in a church, I mean, when you watch like video movies and you like, I love like when you watch a movie and you'll see the Baptist church and they're like singing and they're all happy and they're hugging and they help each other. 
Jehovah's Witnesses aren't really like that, and the organization doesn't really help them. So if they're having problems financially, the rank and file, the Jehovah's Witnesses organization will not help them. They're not charitable to their own people. <clears throat> but within the organization, you know, you might have, you know, friends and stuff that will help you if you're having trouble or whatever, but it is not a charitable, loving organization towards their own people. Um, so, <clears throat> what else? Um, there's so much to tell. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, so I'm currently being shunned by my parents and my son and my siblings. Um, two of my siblings, I've lost track of all of them. I'm the oldest of four. So my brother, who's two years younger than me, he actually works at the headquarters in New York. And it's really interesting. Here's a little uh, conspiratory little um Side note, Jared Kushner bought the Jehovah's Witness headquarters in Brooklyn because they moved to, they moved their headquarters to Walk Hill, New York. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, Mr. 66 building uh, bought their building. And um, I saw a video from some ex-Jehovah's Witnesses talking about Jared Kushner meeting the governing some head of that see i want to know who the actual head of that cult is you've got the governing body they're still kind of the minions but they do have freemason rings on they do and that is so funny because i've been trying to tell my family look look at their ring look at their ring and so i ran into my kid who got married a few years ago and i never knew this he's 26 and you know he didn't tell me but um they don't, they shun, they don't talk to you. You're dead to them, unless you come back. Unless you can convince them that, that they're brainwashed and to wake up, because the people do wake up, but not all of them. Um, and even the people who woke up from my Jehovah's Witness religion, I don't think they've woken up as much as I've woken up. I mean, there might be some out there, but I'm when I watch ex-Jehovah's Witness apostate channels, most of them don't talk about this stuff. And all of these atheist ones who have youtube channels there's some that are huge youtubers like almost like i don't know five hundred thousand crazy numbers um it's this is a really interesting thing too and if you understand who i am and you follow the way my brain works i get i think i have a little add whatever who cares you know they put so much crap on our stuff you know <laughs> but i go like this oh bobbing and weaving um but this, uh, they, a bunch of ex Jehovah's Witnesses were on um, Leah Remini's show on A and E, where she exposes Scientology, and there were similarities about Scientology and Jehovah's Witnesses because it's all brainwashing. <laughs> What's so funny is Leah Remini. If you understand the transgender Hollywood thing, she's a famous actress. She's in movies. She's exposing cults, but she is part of it. And all of these Jehovah's Witnesses are on her show, do not know this about her. But I'm wondering about some of these really high up apostate ex-Jehovah's Witnesses that have become atheist. I don't know. I'm starting to feel like there's probably even conspiracy or stuff that's even within the YouTube um, high up channels, you know how they're saying like some people are Illuminati um, puppets exposing stuff that, you know, like uh, David Icke and I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm just, my brain just has <laughs> huge imagination. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, Leah Remini, that's interesting, Scientology stuff. Okay, uh, where was I going to go next? Um, Bobbin and Weaving. Uh, okay, so I'll just tell you some stories about my childhood, and then I'll tell you about how come how I left and what was the process and what I went through escaping this stuff. And then when I actually woke up was in 2016 was when I woke up to the fact that it was a cult. And then I woke up to everything else throughout the next five years. <clears throat> and I really, 
I started waking up about what's been going on currently, except for the that thing. Um, and, and that thing, I always do that. <laughs> um, think, 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 think. Oh, uh, what was I going to say? So yeah, I don't like looking at myself because I get distracted. Um, I'll just tell you about <clears throat> growing up as a child. Okay. <clears throat> so we did the full-time ministry and there's this thing called serving where the need is great. So if there's territory, they have territory cards dry, drawn up. That's how they know where to go to knock on your door. They, to keep track of you, they have slips called um, return visit slips. And then they write, see, I'm a girl. Am I a girl? Maybe. <laughs> Do the hand thing. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, return visits and stuff. So they knock on your door and then they do not call or return visit. So they'll do DNC, do not call, or RV, return visit, or uh, they might even do a pause day. They might, I don't know. They have all these little different uh, symbols, acronyms or whatever for um, the what happened. And then they'll, they'll, they may keep track of every little thing. They'll say, they'll write down like they have, toys in your yard oh they got kids so let's talk about that kind of stuff it's a sales they have a school and everybody goes to it it's a once a week thing at their meetings even the children everybody learns how to handle householders so it's basically teach, teaching them how to be a salesman it's a amway pyramid scheme yeah that's jehovah's witnesses they're amway basically wrapped up in a religion so uh so you don't get any really good products out of it. you get paper that lines the bottom of your uh rabbit hutch or your birdcage <laughs> um let's see what else so we traveled for the uh they call it the serving where the need is great and you can go anywhere in the world um but usually it's like in your own country so we we went to tennessee and west virginia when i was a kid we lived there my sister was born there so <clears throat> like i was saying there's four of us kids i'm the oldest of four my brother works at the headquarters my two younger siblings don't talk to me but we lost track our whole family became extremely dysfunctional um i struggled with so much emotional stuff growing up um, being the oldest of four, I felt attacked just, it, not every family is like this, but I felt like my father was a narcissist anyway. Um, and then he was an elder in the congregation, and I'm supposed to be just pretty and seen and not heard and try to get married. That's all I'm meant to be. And and I'm like, uh, fuck no. <laughs> I didn't like any of the men. Uh, most of them, I just... They're robots. They're anatomic. <laughs> they're narcissistic. I mean, they're just like NPCs. All of them. All of them are NPCs. That's Jehovah's Witnesses. Perfectly. Putting on the new personality. That's what they call it. New personality. NPC. Instead of non-playing character, we'll call it new personality. <laughs> uh, so, um... traveling to Tennessee. We we lived there twice for the preaching work. And I have stories. I don't know. You know, I don't really have to get into all the little details and stuff. I mean, I had fun and, and we did a lot of fun stuff when I was a kid. We went camping with a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, but there was just so much the constant studying of reading the same stuff, my father would always give me such a hard time because I didn't like reading the literature, okay? I didn't like reading it. I read it, and it's like you hear the same stuff over and over again. We go to school, come home, do your homework. I would want to watch television. I know we shouldn't watch TV now that we're awake, but 
But when you're tired and you come home from school, you just want to sit and watch cartoons or whatever, or draw or play or whatever kids want to do. You know, we're kids. We want to have fun. And so my, my dad would get mad if the house wasn't clean. We didn't vacuum the carpet and our homework and our Bible hadn't been studied. Our literature hadn't been studied. So it was just always working, 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 working. And everything had to be, we were like supposed to be perfect all the time, perfection. And, um, getting in trouble and stuff. So I started getting in trouble. Uh, I had sex out of wedlock and started drinking and partying, getting involved with bad guys. And so I attracted narcissists, of course, because I'm rebelling. And what do I attract? I attract narcs, of course. And I'm an empathic person, but I was rebelling and wanting to have fun. And I just went kind of ugh, crazy. And, um, so my, I married a, a person who turned out to be narcissistic, and I had a child with him. And I struggled with being a Jehovah's Witness in that. There was a lot of drugs and alcohol. I kept getting, I've been disfellowshipped, which is kicked out twice. I am currently in the disfellowshipped phase for them. Um, so there's several ways you can get in trouble they can have what it's called as public reproof which is where everyone knows you did something wrong in the congregation and what is considered wrong is sex not being married uh alcohol or drug abuse smoking um hol holiday party celebrations so if you celebrate any of the holidays like oh i want to celebrate my birthday and someone finds out and you could repeatedly do it over and over again they're going to disfellowship you or counsel you or whatever they decide and there's so much prejudice toward women um i was treated as a harlot <laughs> a slut that's uh how i was treated um <laughs> I don't think I'll <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Um, so you sit. Okay, this is what's so. Okay, I'm going to tell you about the disfellowshipping stuff. This is it's humiliation. It's it's kind of like hazing in all of these uh, secret societies and and um, for sororities and fraternities or whatever. You sit in a group of three men. And you're a woman. And they're asking you about your personal stuff that you're in trouble for. They'll ask you things like about your sexual positions, how many times, oral, anal, disgusting details they want to know. It's embarrassing. And then you're like, you're sorry. You're really sorry. You don't want to do it again. And then they... Uh, decide they 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 tell you after you talk to them and they read you scriptures and you you pray and everything because you're still in good standing you're not disfellowshipped yet um then you sit out and wait while they they're in their jury or their <laughs> their court you're waiting outside and then you go back in and then they tell you their verdict. And so it's all private. It's just three elders. Nobody in the congregation knows unless they know because of gossip or whatever it found out or something. But, um, but there was lots of gossip about me growing up. Um, I developed a bad reputation in the Jehovah's Witness religion. And I got to tell you, it was the best damn thing that ever happened to me. I, I mean, it's unfortunate that it happened to happen. It had to happen that way. It's unfortunate that I left and I had sex with men who were narcissists and got involved in that drug and alcohol crap and I did all kinds of stupid stuff and uh, I learned all that crap and I woke up, but it took me dating a sociopath to wake up and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I mean, it's, it's awful and I'm sure there's billions of stories out there like this. So, uh... That's my story, basically, with the Jehovah's Witness stuff. Um, okay, so I'll tell you a little more about the disfellowshipping. Okay, so what happens is <clears throat> when they decide that you're not repentant and, like, how do they decide that? 
I guess just because they think you're not, because uh, you didn't either say the thing that they wanted to hear or because you've repeatedly done it over and over again so that they, they go, okay, well, well, you've done this many times. I mean, you're obviously not repentant, so we need to extend your... So then that what they do is you're, you're, you're disfellowshipped, you're excommunicated, you're kicked out, you're allowed to go to the meetings, but you cannot be talked to. No one can talk to you. You're, you're dead. People can smile at you or look at you, but they can't talk to you. So, I should go back to, I have more stories about when I was pregnant with my son, too, because I went through the disfellowshipping phase when I was pregnant, because I wasn't, I, I was in and out of the Jehovah's Witness religion since I was in my 20s. So, I, well, I started getting in trouble at like 18 or 19. I mean, I'm a pretty girl. Guys started hitting on me young, and I was very naive, and, um, I mean... <sighs> I don't like talking about that kind of stuff. It just, but it is, it's like all those big bad wolf stories. It's true. They, they're predators. And so they take advantage of naive and innocent, vulnerable. I mean, I was sheltered my whole life. And then you get attention from people who are not these zombies. And yet they're zombies too. So it's like <laughs> crazy crap. Um, so. the disfellowshipping process is just a humiliation r ritual. And, uh, they don't actually, I've taught, I've actually watched a lot of, um, apostate videos of ex Jehovah's witnesses and they will, some of these people who are getting disfellowshipped, they will take a hidden camera in and they'll sit there. And then, uh, they'll like, some of these people do not, um, they don't pray. They don't read the Bible. I guess they. it's like they're lying to the rank and file, the elders in the congregation. They don't actually go in there and pray over you. Like, pray for me. That's, that's a horrible expression, too. They don't pray for you. It's, it's so not genuine. It's kind of more, it's like business is how it feels. It feels like, it just feels like a court. It, it feels like a court thing. Um... And I've even, so while I'm, I'm disfellowship now, it's, I'm still in this, you know, and um, I've been out of it. I've been away from it for, geez, how long has it been? Oh, the last time I talked to my parents was in 2010 and I was disfellowship then. And this is two, th so I've been away from it for just that, away from my parents for 11 years. I think I'm going on 15 years probably of being away from it. Or being disfellowshipped, I'm guessing. Because my I, I was probably, I'm 49, I was probably in my uh, 40s. Oh, <laughs> 30s, 30s, early 30s, mid 30s, I don't know, something like that. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, okay, and I'm going to tell you the story of when I was uh, pregnant with my son. So I got pregnant out of wedlock. From, with his dad in California, and then that whole situation was highly dysfunctional. I don't want to get into all the details of that situation, but then I had to come home and live with my parents. I was, uh, how old was I? I was 20, 23, 20, yeah, around 23. So I came home, lived with my parents. I'm disfellowshipped. So they're not really supposed to talk to me, but I'm living in their house. So they can talk to me, but they can't talk to me about the Bible. This is their teachings. You cannot talk to your children. See, that's another thing with the Jehovah's Witnesses. You cannot pray for your disfellowship family members. They are not allowed to pray for their own daughter. Because I'm dead spiritually. I'm evil. I'm Satana. I'm Satan. I'm Lucifer. And they're in this cult that's brainwashing them. They're, they're willing to lose their child, never talk to her again, just because I had sex out of wedlock and, and drank and, and drugged. But I'm not that person anymore. Even if I was, people should still talk to their kids. I mean, I know, that's terrible. And everything I did was highly narcissistic, and I felt like I was a narcissist too, part of what I was talking about. But I'm not a narcissist. I just did stupid shit escaping and uh, 
I think a lot of people do. You rebel. You wake up. I mean, it doesn't make you a narcissist. I don't think so. Um, it's the actual gaslighting, triangulation, conning, manipulation, all this stuff that they do, lying constantly. So, <clears throat> uh, so I was, I got pregnant with my son. I came home, yes, and then um, I have to, because my parents have their rules, I have to, and I'm an adult, but I'm living in their home, so I have to go to their meetings. I have to study the literature. And I have to be humiliated sitting in the back of the Keenum Hall, which is their church, and sit back there. Well, no one talks to me. No one looks at me. And I'm pregnant. And then eventually, I have a child. So, I'm disfellowshipped. I gave birth. And people... No, wait a minute. I think I got disfellowshipped again. Maybe I've been disfellowshipped three times. It's such a bad time memory. I just hate even thinking about that time period. Big chunk of my life just thrown away in that crap. But it was like, I look at back at all of these little situations that happened of a, a little awakenings here and there of like awakening me to the world we live in. Like even hanging out with people who drugged. I didn't feel comfortable with those people. And yet th that was who I was hanging out with. I was not those people. They were so just like, ugh, NPC. I mean, they didn't, they weren't anything but drugs and sex. That's all they were. I was so much more than that. And yet I was in that crap. It made me sick to my stomach, honestly. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, having a kid, nobody talking to you. At your child's being passed around with people in the congregation holding him because there's a baby and they're no, they know you're going to be reinstated. I mean, I've had a few situations too where uh, ex Jehovah's Witnesses or Jehovah's Witnesses would come to me, like say, uh, people would come over and hang out at my parents' house and, you know, family parties, get togethers, whatever, and friends over, whatever. And I might be in the bedroom disfellowshipped and someone would knock on my door and say Shannon we we miss you so much are you are you coming back to Jehovah or we can't wait to have you back in the congregation we're so proud of you for being here that kind of stuff and then as soon as you're not in it anymore you're dead again to them I mean I get dirty looks from I I see people in my community all the time um that look at me like I am the devil I was in a, a, a pharmacy, I think it was Walgreens or whatever, and there was two people that I've known since I was a little kid. They're my parents' age, and it was in the beauty department area. And I was just standing there, and I saw them. They saw me, and they just looked at me and they go, <sighs> something like that, shaking their head. And I'm like, and at, and at the time, see, since I've woken up, before I would have felt guilt and shame and embarrassment. Now I'm just like, <sighs> I feel sorry for these people. It makes me angry that they think I'm the evil one, but they're being lied to, manipulated, and conned, and, and their money is taken from them, their families being divided. I mean, this entire world system is dividing everybody's family. I mean, this is a small little shit cult fucker. Mm garbage <laughs> but it's just it's kind of like the big picture of the entire scenario of the entire world what is going on in that is the same thing that's going on in the entire world with everybody um i just signed up with tiktok just to, to promote my channel i got a bunch of people on there going you're not awake you're not awake just a bunch of brats and um this one guy who commented on my video, he said to me, he goes, I, it was an Agenda 21 little tiny part of a video beginning intro. Because you only get like 15 seconds. It's so dumb. But it's enough to get you exposure. And I thought, oh, this is a great way to just... Because there's a lot of conspiratory, you know, anonymous and all of those type of people on there. Illuminati exposers and stuff. Freemason exposers, whatever. Um, I thought, well, I'll just put a little quick video on there to help promote my channel and this one guy made a comment about my um 
Agenda 21. He says, like, he goes, well, that doesn't sound like that's for black people. (laughs) Well, all he heard was the first few minutes of it. But it's maybe he's thinking because they're already in his mind. Maybe he's living in like a, I don't know. Is he living in a high rise already? Like, is he in a Harlem or a slum or something? Like, is that what he's thinking? So, I mean, maybe it'll like equal the balance field in his mind too. Well, hey, you know, at least we'll be, (laughs) I don't know. It was weird. It was a weird comment. I'm just starting to really not get people. I do love my subscribers who, I miss a lot of them. I wish people would come back. There's some people I've reached out to and I still haven't heard from them yet. But um, I hope that was helpful. This is for Kevin. But anybody else who's interested in my story, uh, Kevin is a subscriber and we've been talking. And so, yes, that's my story. Um, Is there anything else I want to add? I don't know. If you have any more thoughts or comments, that's 40 some minutes. If you have any thoughts or comments, questions you want to leave, let me know. All right. Talk to you later. Love you. Bye.